If you love track days and have $1,000 to spare, head to your local KTM dealership right away. That's the minimum deposit needed for the newly revamped and exceptionally refined KTM RC8C, the most dedicated and uncompromising production machine designed specifically for the racetrack. Why so specialized? As a track-only bike, it was never meant to be homologated for the road. Without the need to accommodate public highway regulations, the Austrian manufacturer, in collaboration with race specialist Kramer Motorcycles, could focus solely on one objective achieving outstanding lap times on the track. Every detail, from its adjustable steering head angle to its unique aero wings, is designed to make it faster from one apex to the next. This results in a riding experience unlike any fully homologated, 5 Euro Plus road legal sport bike. Even if track-only bikes aren't your thing, the updated RC8C holds broader significance with KTM recently announcing preliminary details of the 990RC are set to launch in 2025. The 990 will be KTM's first pure road-going sport bike since the beloved RC8 was discontinued. While the engine capacities of the two bikes will differ, and many of the RC8 CS race features will be adapted for road use, both bikes will share similar power and torque outputs, chassis design, dimensions, and geometry. We traveled to one of the world's most thrilling tracks, Portimo in Portugal, to test not only the most focused production bike in the world, but also the machine that will mark KTM's return to the sport bike market. Hashtag 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 KTM RC8C recap. The first generation 2021 KTM RC8C, along with its Kramer GP2-890 R counterpart, housed a variant of the 8-valve LC8C parallel twin engine typically seen in the 890 Duke. This model, however, featured a different airbox and exhaust system. The original RC8C delivered 128 horsepower and 73.8 lbft of torque, surpassing the standard Duke by 8 horsepower. Hashtag 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 2024 model technical details. The 2024 model retains the same 890 cubic centimeters power unit but is tuned to boost peak power to 135 horsepower and increase the rev limit to 12,000 rpm from 10,500 rpm. Enhancements include titanium valves and connecting rods, two piston rings per cylinder, and larger 48 mm throttle bodies. These modifications lighten the engine internals, raise the compression ratio, and add more fuel to the mix for increased power and higher revs. An additional oil cooler helps manage the extra heat, and riders can quickly switch between two full-power throttle maps while on the move. With a press of the race starter button on the right handlebar, the compact and well-balanced LC8C engine roars to life. The race switchgear isn't labeled, requiring a moment of familiarization. The nearly unsilenced full-titanium Acropovic exhaust fills the pit lane with a racy soundtrack. Track day enthusiasts visiting noise-regulated circuits should note that KTM offers a noise-canceling insert and a quieter exhaust option that reduces the noise level to 98 decibels. Once on the move, the clutch becomes redundant thanks to a standard up-and-down quickshifter and auto blipper. As you cruise down Portimo's pit lane, a glance at the new dash, complete with GPS and data logger, reveals the settings of the new 4 2024 Rider Aids. Lean sensitive traction control offers 9 levels plus an offsetting, and there's also wheelie control, which was active during my first session. With preheated Pirelli race slicks, we were ready to attack right from the pit lane exit. On the track, immediately you feel the RC8 CS lightness, plus a clarity and sharpness you won't find on even the most focused road-going sport bike. The KTM also has a wide spread of torque, and in the softer fuel map the power delivery is reasonably easy going. It's not pillow soft, just forgiving, allowing you to ride that smooth and urgent mid-range, rather than immediately having to switch on the more manic revs and power. Exiting Portimo's last turn in fourth gear, however, you dab down on the seamless race pattern quickshifter into fifth before crossing the start-finish line and grabbing top. This is where you feel the difference of the new, higher revving engine and its extra serving of power. The new bike is more willing to rev than the old. You can hold on to the gears longer, rev the engine harder, and on open sections of track the new RC8C is noticeably faster. It's not a crazy blur of arm-stretching power like a 200-plus horsepower Ducati Panigale or BMW M1000RR, but with only 313 pounds to accelerate, 
it's certainly lively. Both engine maps feel similar once the throttle is beyond 30% open. It's the initial pickup that changes, and the second map is sharper in this regard. The new over-rev facility and the map's aggressive delivery allow you to push for lap times, driving harder between apexes as you hold onto gears longer. The LC8C unit is slim, light, and above all, flexible. Usable drive lower down and through the mid-range makes it easy to ride when you are learning a track or riding tired at the end of a track day. And its free revving top-end fizz delivers in spades when you're hunting down those super bikes or chasing a lap time. Chassis wizardry. Harnessing all this urgency is a Marcus Kramer inspired multi-adjustable chassis that's race ready from the crate. The fuel tank is where you'd expect to find the rear subframe and an airbox where there'd normally be a fuel tank. Almost every part of the chassis is adjustable to optimize and personalize either chassis geometry or rider fit, including the steering head angle and fork offset, as well as the high-end WP Apex Pro suspension. Both seat height and ride height can be changed, along with the bar position and even the brake lever bite point. A ready-to-race spec also includes Brembo Stylema calipers and 290mm discs, which have a smaller diameter than that of many road bikes as they only have to stop 313 pounds and are among the strongest brakes I have ever used. Lightweight forged aluminum die mag wheels and Pirelli slicks are standard along with lightweight fiberglass bodywork, used instead of carbon fiber because it's cheaper to replace. You might expect a bike that weighs the same as a road legal 125 commuter is going to be tiny, but it isn't. It's light, but also spacious. The adjustable bars are wide and racy, but not radical. There is enough room between the pegs and the seat to stop knees seizing. The screen is tall enough to get in behind, and the whole cockpit is roomier than a conventional Supersport 600S and perhaps even roomier than some super bikes. Crucially, the RC8C is 66.1 pounds lighter than the race-ready Yamaha GYDR, R6 and 112 pounds lighter than a road-legal Panigale V2, and on the move you immediately feel that lightness. Those undersized discs and light die mag rims minimize both unsprung mass and steering inertia and help make the bike flickable in a way no road machine can match. Until you recalibrate to its lightning rate of turn, it's all too easy to turn too early to the apex. But don't be fooled into thinking the RC8C is a flighty beast because it's as stable in high-speed corners as much heavier sport bikes I've ridden at Portimo, and far more accurate. Those distinctive aero wings probably contribute, as does the adjustable HyperPro steering damper, and despite my best efforts to destabilize the RC with my clumsily shifting body weight, I couldn't provoke a moment of protest from the unflappable chassis. Electronic Aids the first-generation RC8C didn't come with rider aids, but now lean-sensitive traction control is standard. There's a wet setting optimized to wet tires, and another setting designed specifically for slick rubber, while you also have the option to turn off the TC entirely. With only 135 horsepower on tap and a chassis that feeds you with so much feel and grip, TC is a bonus rather than an essential. For the final session of our test, though, I switched it on 